Welcome back to my travels around South Australia and the final instalment of what has ended up being a three-part series on historic copper mine sites in South Australia. Check out the previous videos on Kapunda and Burra. On the way to Moonta, I went the long way around so I could visit the Butte Silo Art. It also meant I could pass by the Pink Salt Lake in Loch Eel. It really depends on what time of year you see the lake. A few weeks back, I passed by the lake and one section of it actually was bubblegum pink. Unfortunately, the SD card I used corrupted, so I haven't got any footage. On my way to Moonta earlier this year, I did stop off at Bunbunga Lake, yes, that's its real name, but it was only a very pale pink. The Australian sense of humour can be seen with the Loch Eel monster made out of old car tyres. Butte Silo Art was completed in 2022, and I think it's the prettiest one I've seen so far. The silos are still working silos, and grain was being loaded during the time I was there. Butte is a lovely small town with a museum in its old police station and friendly locals who chat to you. I don't like to film people so I tend to wait until I can get footage or a photo without people in it. The main street looks empty but there were people about. Copper was found in the Moonta area in 1861, 20 years after the finds in Kapunda and Burra. It was also found in much larger quantities. The mine finally closed in 1923. The township of Moonta Mines sprang up around the mine site. The school was built and at its peak had an enrolment of over a thousand students. With the closure of the mine, the local population decreased and the school was closed in 1968 and the building became a museum run by the National Trust. On the same site as the museum is the Moonta Mines Railway, a fun way to explore the site. The small mountain ahead with the tunnel through it was actually made from the tailings that came out of the mine. It was actually a wombat digging away its burrow that brought the copper ore to the attention of a local shepherd and it launched the mining industry in the area. The museum's exhibits are a good insight into what the mine site was like during its peak. model of the original Moon to Mine site and some of those buildings still exist today. The copper ore went to the smelters at Wallaroo and from there it was shipped overseas. All that's left of the smelters now is the square Welsh chimney. The miners were Cornish and the operators of the smelters were Welsh. Moonter by the late 19th century had the largest Cornish population outside of Cornwall and they introduced their pasties to the locals. Yes, it's pronounced pasty here, not pasty, which sounds really funny to me. I like my pasty with sauce. There's a lookout on one of the tailings heap, so you can look out over the mine site. The round Cornish chimney. I know more about 19th century industrial chimneys than I ever wanted to thanks to visiting all these mine sites. The chimney belongs to the engine house that pumped the water out of the mines. The actual town of Moonta is about a kilometre away and it was the administrative centre but most of the miners lived in cottages at the Moon to Mine site. This one, built in about 1870, has been restored by the National Trust. It was built using wattle and daub. I hope you've enjoyed exploring the Moon to Mine site that can be found in this big wide world. 
and please subscribe to see more videos in the future. There's a smorgasbord of destinations coming up.